Hey guys, BSRC here with RC Nightmare. One of the most common complaints I get at the hobby shop are stock brush motors burning out too quickly. Now, there's a lot of reasons you can burn one of these out, be it from overheating or contaminating, but doing a proper braking will give you the best chance at a long lifespan and more power. So we're going to talk a little bit about the two most common braking methods you can do for a brushed motor. There's a wet braking method involving submersing the motor in water, and the dry braking method for those who don't like to mess around with water and electronics. I'm going to start with the wet braking method. You're going to want electronic contact cleaner, rubbing alcohol, or if you have distilled water, that works as well, and a little bit of motor bearing oil. You can get that at the local hobby shop, or if you have any oil liner on the house, it's probably okay, but it's nice to have your uh, uh, proper oiler. And a couple D-sized batteries from a flashlight and hookup wire. So to start, you're going to submerge the motor in the water. A lot of people ask why do you do this? Well, the, the water acts as a lubricant. It's going to carry away the carbon particles that are created as the brushes break in and it's going to keep it cool at the same time. So hook her up making sure you got the polarity correct. You want to break her in in reverse. And you want to let that go for about 20 minutes or so, 20 minutes to a half hour. We're going to set this to the side and I'll show you how to do the dry method. Alright, if you're a little bit water shy, you can do the motor break-in without submersing your motor in water. Simply unbolt your, mo unbolt your motor from the transmission, get your radio and battery set up, and we're just going to simply use the throttle trim on your transmitter to run the motor at extremely low speed. The reason we're using two D-sized batteries on the water braking method is to keep the voltage down. We don't want the motor spinning at full speed, we want a nice and easy braking. So we're going to do the same thing here giving it just a little bit of throttle to get her going. And again, you can let that sit for 20 minutes to a half hour. Alright, we've had both our motors spinning for about a half hour now. I'm going to pull the one out of the water. You will notice that the water gets real dark and that is a good thing. That's all the carbon particles being carried away from the motor. And we'll shut off our Now we're almost done, but the most important part of the braking method is to make sure you clean the motor afterwards and re-lube it. The one that was underwater is completely dry now, so it, we want to immediately clean it off with our motor cleaner to get all the water out of it. We don't want it to rust. So stick the tube of the cleaner right inside the motor and give her a good spray until the cleaner comes out clear. Dry that off a little bit. Alright, so now we have all the water out of the inside of the motor, but now we have to re-lubricate it. So take your bearing oil, you're just going to put one small drop on both sides of the shaft. So we have the shaft coming out of the rear of the motor here, and there's a bushing there, as well as the front. Give them both a drop. as well as a drop on the inside of the motor. This oil I got from a local hobby shop is good for the commutator, that's the spinning part of the motor. So I'm going to stick it right inside there and give it one little drop on the comm. Spin it over a few times by hand to work in the oil. And that motor is good to go. Now we will do the same procedure to the motor that we broke in out of the water. Make sure you clean it thoroughly and re-lube it. It's important to remember now, every half hour to hour run time, to re-clean the motors and move them afterwards. If you want to get the most life out of your motor, remember keep it clean inside. Most of us run in pretty dirty conditions, so again, spray it out and you'll have a great motor that lasts a long time. That's it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, comment below, post up at RC Nightmare Forums. We'll talk to you soon.